Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Tan, um, Chair, Chairman of Soda Foundation and VP and CTO, uh, Cloud Solution at FutureWay. Um, with me today is uh, Reddy from Intel, um, and together we are uh, going to share with you what Soda Foundation is about and how we are trying to um, unify data and storage management. The Soda Foundation um, is focuses on open source data and management, uh, data and storage management. Um, we will launch the foundation back um, on June 29th of last year. And this foundation was um, chartered under the uh, Linux Foundation as a, as a project. So the mission um, that we have is to actually fo foster an ecosystem of open source data and storage management software, and also to provide a new term forum where different projects can come together to um, collaborate and integrate. And ultimately, this will help us to uh, provide end users with uh, quality end-to-end -end solutions. The Member, the Soda Foundation is supported by uh, these members that you see here. Um, and besides the members, we also have partners with like, we have partners like um, the, the Storage Networking Industry Association. So the governance for Soda Foundation is uh, very typical of a Linux Foundation project. Um, we have a governing board um, that oversees all the business decisions and, and so on. And govern the governing board is uh, supported by um, four committees: um, the technical oversight committee, which actually drives the um, the sets the technology uh, strategy and the roadmap. Um, the end user advisory committee uh, provides the uh, use cases and feedbacks, and the outreach committee is the one that. Um, organizes events and you know, um, evangelize the Soda Foundation. And um, the Alliance Committee focuses on collaboration with the different projects and, and uh, fostering integration. So the people that are involved in the um, foundation um, is spread across the world. Um, they are, they are, they are um, representatives from um, different companies like big as um, the multinational companies as well as our small smaller startups. So for um, end users are uh, very important to Soda Foundation. Um, the Foundation uh, End User Advisory Committee, uh, as you can see here, um, the representatives come from come from major corporations as well as our smaller organizations. So we have um, like Toyota, Vodafone, SoftBank and so on. Um, so they represent some of the most uh, largest and most innovative companies around the world. And what they do is that they meet up regularly and they provide uh, feedback on their use cases and also uh, and also to do a POC test and provide um, feedback on the, the test. And this helps us to, helps the TOC to determine the, uh, the, the roadmap and set, you know, uh, set features for the, the roadmap and the directions for the, um, the, the, I mean, SODA projects in general. So the ecosystem that we are trying to build uh, comprises of uh, five different segments. So in terms of like the end users, these are the ones, again, that, that help us to um, provide us with the uh, requirements, um, the, the use cases, the feedbacks and so on. Um, the developers, the community developers are the ones that help us to uh, develop the projects and provide innovation to, to uh, Soda and the data storage industry. And um, the vendors that are involved in these projects, I mean, they help to build the uh, solutions. And what's important here is that they are not only solutions. I mean, these are this will be open source solutions that are in, and they interoperate. Um, and then the industry organizations that we work with, like the standards bodies and 
other uh, open source foundations or projects. Um, we work with them on standardization, certi certification, co-marketing, and, e and events and stuff like that. And academia, um, that um, for academics uh, segment, we just kind of started. So, um, so we what we are looking for is like, um, you know, helping to set up labs and then do internships and and um, have all this uh, academic research on uh, data and storage um, technologies. So um, the soda community, um, we've been growing it since um, the open SDS days, which was the, the, the previous life of uh, Soda Foundation. So, so you can see like the, the photos that you see here, uh, all the uh, different events that we that were held around the world uh, pre-COVID. And since then, because of the I mean, pandemic that's going on, uh, we have, um, most of our events are virtual. So uh, hopefully we can uh, start having physical events again around the world um, by next year, okay. So one of the uh, things that we have, we are currently doing is the, the data and storage trends survey. This is a survey that we are doing in partnership with the Linux Foundation research team. And also uh, the the partners for the survey, the CSC and CS near uh, OIF and so on. So we have uh, kind of completed the survey back in um, back just last month, actually. So we are currently um, uh, producing a report, and hopefully we'll be able to share the report um, by by the end of October. So if you are interested in the report, uh, please follow us on our Twitter or LinkedIn. And, and when the report is ready, we'll be announcing um, at those uh, different at those channels. So next, I'm going to be introducing the uh, open data framework. So this is the typical enterprise IT uh, picture that you you see. I mean, there are, you have like virtual desktops, you have like uh, VMs, you have uh, file store, backup, development, you know, clusters and so on. So what's happening is that most of the time, I mean, you have like different solutions for each of these things. And what happens is that each solution creates a silo that's, uh, that makes it hard to monitor and control. So, and the problem gets worse because you have all these different, I mean, your data is spread out not only across these different silos, but all, I mean, it's also spread out across data centers, the clouds, and the the edge. So the key challenges that you you face is like how do you you know control the uh, capacity, or how do you optimize the capacity? How do you optimize the performance? How do you do data protection? How do you data security, data compliance, and stuff like that? So having a modern data, I mean, infrastructure, I mean, adds to a, I mean. A, a different degree of data and storage challenges. So what the open data framework um, allows you to do is that it provides a centralized view and control and connects storage to containers, VMs, and other platforms. And this framework should provides data and storage services such as a block file and object storage, um, backup recovery, security and compliance, and so on. So the whole idea is to unify data and storage management with a single open framework across the core, the cloud, and the edge. And here, um, this is a, a um, an example of what how the open data framework uh, can be applied. And in this picture, what you see is like the uh, a connected car platform, which is I mean which has a data center, the edge, and also, I mean, it utilizes the cloud and also the warehouse for like uh, archiving and so on. So with the open data framework, uh, you can satisfy many of the re um, requirements of this op um, connected car platform by, by providing the block file objects um, storage services, 
um, be it in the data center or at the edge or in the cloud. Um, it does backup and recovery. Um, you can backup from, for instance, the take snapshots from um, the tier two storage and then back it up to the to the cloud or to the uh, storage. And also you can take care of like life cycle management, for instance, like data that sits on tier one storage that's been sitting there for idle for three months and you can actually move the data to tier two storage. And then after it's been sitting in tier two storage for six, another six months, we can archive it to cold storage or move it to the cloud archive. Okay, and there are, I mean, other, other things that you see here, the security and compliance and the retention and archiving and so on. So essentially with this open data framework, everything can be done uh, through a single platform and no matter where the data sits, whether it's at the edge, at the data center or in the cloud. This diagram shows what um, ODF is about. Um, ODF architecture provides an open API for integration with platforms and applications and offers like um, seamless plugin integration with uh, Kubernetes, OpenStack and VMware through plugins. Um, the storage profiles offers storage policy based storage provisioning, data protection, data lifecycle and so on. And heterogeneous storage uh, from the different vendors, um, they connect but through the um, storage stock and using CSI, Swordfish and OpenStack Cinder Manila interfaces. And that performance can be monitored um, through a single pane of, uh, through a single glass, glass of pane. And the multi-cloud uh, controller offers access to the different cloud providers through a single uh, S3 interface. So it enables things like uh, cloud tiering, cloud backup, and essentially uh, it lets users um, easily build end-to-end -end solutions um, with any storage. So open data framework APIs are based on a SWOT, near Swordfish standard. Um, so by leveraging Swordfish uh, management profiles, we're able to speed up development and ensure interoperability with the Swordfish ecosystem. Um, the ODF uh, storage API includes storage provisioning with uh, policies for replications, snapshots, retention, and so on. The multi-cloud API supports the major cloud services and operations such as uh, data lifecycle management. Uh, for monitoring, uh, we have the monitoring API that enables storage performance monitoring with uh, IOPS, throughput, and other metrics. So um, all functions are with, I mean, we the way we um, design this is that uh, API is with API first design. And so all functions are accessible and can be easily extended to support, I mean, newer features. So as I mentioned earlier, storage can be connected to ODF by the different management interfaces. Open data framework currently support all uh, CSI drivers and allow multiple drivers to be plugged in at the same time. Open data framework also supports the uh, open stack Cinder and Manila. And also um, again, we support the Neo Swordfish standard. So with open source, um, open standard, open ecosystem, and open collaboration. We think, or we believe, that open data framework will be able to meet the needs of most end users and help end users uh, unify data and storage management with a single open framework across the core, the cloud, and the edge. So, with that, uh, that ends my part of the talk, and then um, Reddy will be introducing um, the the um, SODA projects in detail. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen, for the SODA intro and the open data framework overview. Uh, I'm going to cover the SODA um, incubation projects um, and uh, the eco projects. Um, SODA incubation projects uh, you know, follow our, you know, um, governance model pro, you know, that uh, 
is actually provided by this sort of foundation. Um, whereas the eco projects follow, you know, their own governance model, but these projects are really meant to be um, providing a complementary storage and data management services for the um, SODA, uh, you know, uh, core framework services. Um, the first one in the SODA incubation project is the DEOS. Uh, DEO stands for Distributed Asynchronous Object Storage. Um, the, um, this is actually developed by Intel. Um, it's an open source project. Um, it is designed from the ground up to uh, take advantage of the next generation media, um, storage class memory, as well as the NVMe SSDs, uh, performance and bandwidth characteristics. Um, this has all the attributes needed um, for the distributed object storage functionality. This includes like the uh, ability to, uh, you know, make sure that the data placement uh, looks at different fault domains and distributes your data. Um, and it has the ability to, um, you know, provide the end-to-end -end data integrity um, as well as non-blocking IO operations. Um, this includes metadata as well as the data, uh, you know, related operations to deliver um, high throughput, high performance, um, you know, high volts per second uh, for the next generation media. The next incubation project is the IG. Um, IG is actually contributed by China Unicom. Um, this is act, this is another object store. Um, it um, is actually being used in production by China Unicom. Um, the concept behind this one is you, you can have multiple independent self clusters. Um, these are manageable uh, without incurring the uh, significant, you know, the failure domain, uh, you know, type of problems, especially when you have self cluster that have uh, multi petabyte, you know, capacity, uh, fault domain management becomes very challenging uh, when there is a failure. Um, HIG, um, you know, addresses that gap by managing independent self clusters um, and presenting a unified namespace um, using the S3 API, uh, which is based off of Min Minio uh, backend storage. Uh, and, it's, and it has its own metadata layer um, that uses the uh, database, um, either MySQL or TiDB as a way to manage the metadata. That includes details about different self clusters and uh, where your data is located um, and uh, security uh, and other aspects that are actually maintained in the metadata. So those are the two incubation projects. Um, the eco projects, uh, LinStore is the block storage management uh, software, open source software that is actually uh, developed by uh, and developed and managed by Linbit. Um, the, uh, the found fundamental construct in the Lint store is uh, you can actually manage uh, replicated volumes among a pool of servers. Um, and uh, you can actually um, create these volumes from different types of media. So if you look at the bottom of the uh, right-hand side picture, um, Lint store can actually carve out the block storage out of hard disk drives. Um, the SSDs as well as you know NVMe you know uh, media uh, and includes you know persistent memory as well uh, and it can expose the um, block storage uh, via traditional iSCSI based on network protocol um, or it can actually expose through the NVMe or Fabrics which is the uh, you know uh, the protocol of choice for the NVMe uh, devices um, and then you can manage these volumes natively. Uh, using the you know container orchestration framework such as Kubernetes, um, LinStore does have uh, several enterprise capabilities. Um, uh, things like multi-tier storage management, so you can have a pool of storage managed, um, you know, for the hard disk drives, and then you can have pool of storage managed by the NVMe, uh, you know, drives, um, and you can actually migrate the data back and forth based on your um, you know, the lifecycle management policies. Um, data dupe, dedupe is another critical functionality, specifically for um, high performance and expensive media like NVMe, where data dupe, dedupe is an extremely critical, you know, capability that is required. Uh, Geo clustering, where you can actually have, you know, 
multiple geos and you have the storage deployed in multiple geos, you can actually manage them together using the lin store geo clustering capability. Um, and then of course, you want to be able to, uh, you know, deliver an extremely high performing, um, you know, the uh, data access, uh, specifically for the uh, NVMe type of media and deliver, you know, significant number of IOPS uh, with, you know, extremely low overhead data plane. Um, so that's really the Lint store. Um, so it's a distributed block store uh, functionality is what you get out of Lint store. Um, the next one is Open B EBS. Uh, Open EBS is a container attached storage, um, and it delivers that capability through the uh, dynamic persistent volume, you know, implementation, which is really required for stateful applications. Um, stateful applications like Cassandra, MongoDB, um, MySQL, they all require a, a way to uh, protect your data beyond um, you know, uh, the storage server fault domain. Uh, Lint Store Pro, it Open EBS actually provides that capability organically uh, through the native integration with the Kubernetes uh, container orchestration, container storage you know, services. Um, it has different data engines that you can actually take advantage of uh, based on the type of media and the type of server that you have uh, with a control plane uh, that provides, uh, you know, the driver functionality, things like CSI drivers or Kubernetes has a way to manage uh, and get, um, you know, dynamic persistent volume capability. So OpenEBS is actually managed by Maya data. Um, uh, it's the it's part of the CNS CNCF sandbox uh, you know project. Uh, Zenko is the other open source infrastructure software. Um, this is the uh, data management software stack, uh, open source, provided by Scality, um, where you can actually manage um, the islands of data that is actually deployed on prem as well as public cloud. So you could have object stores. Uh, on-prem as well as, let's say you have it on Amazon and uh, Microsoft and Google Cloud, um, you can actually provision the object storage uh, transparently through one uniform API, which is basically based off of Amazon S3. Uh, and then you can provision them, you can actually manage them, you can move them on the, all the lifecycle management aspects um, through the multi-cloud um, uh, um, data management framework that Zenko provides, you can actually get to, you know, all the functionality needed. Uh, so that's on the Zenko. And uh, Cortex is the uh, open source project developed by Seagate. Um, it's a distributed object storage um, that is primarily designed to drive efficiency to take advantage of the high capacity hard disk drives. Um, it has a mechanism to um, integrate uh, with uh, the uh, other uh, object storage backends, uh, things like Deos. So let's say Deos is managing the high performance and via media. Uh, you will be able to actually take a snapshot of that media and archive that into the Cortex, you know, object storage backend. Um, so it provides a mechanism to, you know, um, coexist with the other object storage backends to deliver a complementary, you know, multi-tiered object storage, you know, solution as well. Um, so those are the um, uh, incubation and the eco projects. Um, so as Steven mentioned, um, Soda Foundation and Open Data Framework, um, you know, the focus is to essentially deliver um, unified uh, storage management as well as the data management capability, um, um, all the services around it, uh, and then consume that using the cloud native frameworks. Um, the incubation projects as well as the um, Soda uh, eco projects are uh, essentially meant to provide complementary services to deliver a comprehensive you know, data and storage management functionality that the customers um, you know, uh, have been looking for, uh, whether it is delivering a high performance block storage or high performance object storage um, that can exploit the next generation media, or it's a life cycle management, um, or um, it's essentially high capacity hard disk drives, irrespective of you know, what kind of um, uh, you know, the storage management problem you may have, you will be able to actually um, 
you know manage your data and the storage uh, through this integrated you know set of uh, incubation and then eco projects that can that are available through the Soda Foundation. Um, we look forward uh, and your help um, in joining the Soda Foundation. Um, this may include anything from you know core contributions to the Soda Foundation services or uh, contributions to incubation and eco projects are providing the you know uh, user perspective um, joining as a user uh, are actually consuming the soda and deploying that in your you know um, in your uh, implementations as well so virtually we can take advantage of anything and everything all the way from the development to um, requirements to you know testing and uh, real uh, life deployment usages so we look forward to your participation in the soda community would love you to join the soda foundation so anyone who is interested um, you know um, send an email to uh, soda foundation and we'll be happy to have a discussion with you thank you this concludes my uh, session <laughs>